Hi, this is Corey McCarthy, and welcome to a new episode of Fit, Formidable, and Fantastic. That's right. Go F yourself, and happy Friday. In this episode, I want to touch on the topic of whether everyone can thrive on carbohydrate-rich diets, and what does the science say about this? Now, I'm going to be looking at a, uh, a piece of research that was released this year, actually, um, which examines uh, that precise question. I'm going to summarize what the findings were and come to a conclusion for you all here. So bear with me as I uh, go through the notes. Now, in the top corner of the screen, you're going to see a link to the paper um, with the details about the research. It was released, um, it was published on March 30th, 2014, in a journal called Nature Genetics. And basically what it was, it was a, it's a wide-scale study of DNA that spanned different countries, including the United Kingdom, France, Sweden, and Singapore. So you get a pretty broad demographic. And it included both individuals who are obese and of normal healthy weight. Now, what the study um, discovered was that the number of copies of a gene called AMY1 determined the amount of salivary amylase enzyme present that can predigest carbohydrates that you consume. And the study utilized both glucose and starch for the test. So again, this is a very broad study and it covered a lot of bases. Now, what it found was the um, people with uh, lower copies of AMY1 gene possessed an eight times greater chance of becoming obese. Whereas for every extra copy of the AMY1 gene present, there was a 20% decrease in obesity risk. This basically links carbohydrates to fat gain and obesity on a genetic level from person to person. So again, to rehash that, if you have fewer copies of AMY1, you possess a greater chance of becoming obese. Um, eight times greater, to be honest. Uh, and for every copy of the gene present in your system, uh, beyond, I think, two, which is what everyone is supposed to be, um, everyone's supposed to have at least, you get a 20% decrease in your obesity risk. Now, more research is clearly needed on this, but this goes to some length to prove that some people are just naturally and genetically more carb sensitive than others. And not just carb sensitive, but it, it opens them up to uh, a slew of weight problems, you know, gaining weight and all the problems that come along with that. And it actually shows why, and for myself included, why some people just thrive better on uh, fat loss diets, for instance, that um, do not contain a large number of carbohydrates. In fact, I personally find that if there are carbs included in my fat loss diets, it tends to throw a wrench in the gears, so to speak, of my fat loss program. So I actually prefer to uh, cut in a cyclic ketogenic manner, which is higher fat, moderate protein, lower carbohydrate. So this goes to uh, to show that um, you know that this is why some people just react poorly to carbohydrates in their in their diet. Um, and it also shows that dieting is clearly not one size fits all. It's a very personal and very goal dependent. But you know that kind of goes without saying. You'd figure that really. But this is actually showing why. It's teaching us more about ourselves. Um, so if you find that you're somebody who's very carb sensitive or reacts poorly to carbs, this could be the reason why. And um, because not everyone's going to favorably respond to a carbohydrate rich diet, which circles back to answering the question in the beginning of the video. And that answer is clearly no. Not everybody can thrive on carb rich diets. So if people come right out and, and tell you basically if you're having trouble losing weight and they're like, eat more carbs, you know, lower your fat, eat more carbs. You can throw this one right back in their face. They're giving you blanket information and blanket information is inherently uh, incorrect when you're not allowing room for change for individual needs and goals. So 
that's really all that I have to say on that. That really was the uh, that's that's the research right there, and what the findings were. And like I said, more research is needed. We need to go into more detail with this. This is very interesting, and it's teaching us more and more about ourselves. And it even opens up questions as to, you know, because this is a genetic thing that perhaps in different parts of the world, people who have dominant genes from certain parts of the world, like maybe think the tropical regions might do better on a high carbohydrate diet or higher carbohydrate diet than someone, for instance, maybe from like Northern Europe, where they might have had more of a uh, protein and fat rich diet and less in the way of carbohydrates due to climate. And I guess it also comes down to since a lot of us are mutts and we have mixed uh, backgrounds, mixed, mixed uh, ancestry, that what's the dominant um, gene in our ancestry pool. So, for instance, if you're somebody who's Swedish, but you also have maybe, I don't know, uh, Italian blood in there too, but your Swedish blood is extremely dominant, perhaps you're going to find that um, you are more carb sensitive. But again, that right there, that last bit I'm bringing up, that's just my own theory. I'm just, uh, you know, reading into this a bit. Like I said, it needs more research. It's extremely interesting. So if you have any questions or you want to discuss this more, please drop comments below. And I will see you guys on Monday for another Meatless Monday. Have a good weekend. And until I see you again, stay fit, stay formidable, and stay fantastic. Take care.